Hello everyone, welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. Now, before we begin, I always want to say I just hope that you guys are doing well. Hopefully you guys have a big smile on your face because I'm about to take that away. <laughs> Let me just apologize in advance for this video because this right here is often either the worst or the second worst topic uh, students seem to find for Engineering Statics and that is force reduction. Now, it's one of those topics that becomes complex because it's not really apparent what questions are asking. So hopefully I, uh, I do a good enough job to show you guys what exactly it means by force reduction. Well, let's talk about force reduction. So force couple systems. So a lot of the time before we talked about how if we have a lot of forces acting on a particle, we can actually simplify it to a single resultant force. So again, we have our particle we had a lot of forces acting upon it and we were able to take all of those forces and combine them into a single force which we called the resultant force. Now finding this resultant force was actually fairly simple. The hardest part was getting all of our forces into Cartesian vector notation. But once we did, we can find the resultant force simply by adding everything together. Now the trick here was we had a concurrent system which means all of those forces acted at the same point so it made our lives a lot easier. Now, in the past couple of videos, we've been talking about moments and what happens when forces do not act at the same point. So the question becomes, for non-concurrent systems where our forces are all acting at different locations, how do we find a resultant force and a resultant moment? So let's say initially we are given this scenario where we have four forces, but they're all acting at different directions. How can we simplify this system right here? Well, the good news is, is the resultant force is going to be the same procedure. So the resultant force, if I wanted it, all I have to do is add all the forces together as such. But I got a little bit ahead of myself because you notice when I clicked, we also have something called a resultant moment. All right, so we had a resultant force, which is just all the forces added together, but we're also creating a resultant moment. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. How do we get that resultant moment? Well, it's actually fairly simple. Sounds tricky, but it's actually simple, where the resultant moment in this case is simply going to be the moment created by force 2, plus the moment created by force 3, plus the moment created by force 4. And you guys may be saying, Clayton, what about the moment created by force 1? So this is where you guys as students have to be very cautious, because if we look here, we are finding the resultant force and moment about a specific point. This is where things get tricky, is the resultant force and moment about a point is going to be different than the resultant force and the moment about a different point. As we'll see, the resultant force actually is going to be the same, but the moments change depending on which point we want. So in this particular case, I found the resultant force and moment about point 1. And if we look to the left-hand side here, we know that force 1 acts directly through point 1. And we know that if a force acts through a point, <laughs> this is not really what I was trying to go for, but if a force acts through a point, it doesn't create any moment. That's why we don't have moment one here. Now, if you guys are kind of thinking ahead, you guys are going to say, uh oh, this is going to be a huge pain. In the and you're right, because remember, for moments in 3D, we need to do cross product. So if I wanted the moment two, moment three, moment four, I actually am going to have to create position vectors from point one to each one of those forces and then cross them together. So in this particular scenario, if it's three dimension, I have to do the cross product three times. And this is why that previous video, when I talked about moment couples, that's why that's so important. That will allow us to save us a lot of time in these particular scenarios. So it's very important to know how moments are created. So when we get to these scenarios, you guys know the best approach to quickly find all of those moment components. All right, so not too bad so far. So let's talk about the procedure. I find that procedure always helps students kind of visualize, okay, what are my steps going to be and why are the steps the way that they are? So if we want to create an equivalent force couple system, and that basically just means a resultant force and a resultant moment, well, what we do is we take our 3D vector space, we take our two forces, and we follow basically the same procedure. So in this particular case, if I wanted to create a force couple system about point, point O, I was going to say point zero, but point O, the steps would be as follows. The first one is we need to determine the moment both of these forces create about point O. So for example, if I'm looking at force A, so FA, 
what I would have to do is I would have to create a position vector that goes from point O to any location on FA and then cross them together. That'll give me my moment about point O from force A. The problem is, is I have to do the exact same thing for force B. So I have to create a position vector from O to B or force B. Remember, the, the position vector can be at any point along the line of action of the force and I cross them together. So this is where it actually becomes quite tedious is this first step right here because the first step requires cross product and the cross product can be a time consuming operation. It's not too bad, but it still is one of the more lengthy uh, operations we have. So that's the first step, creating the moment each force creates about the point of interest. From there, we move on to a simpler step and that is finding the resultant force. Now again, that's the easiest one because if I have FA and FB in Cartesian vector notation, all I need to do is add the components together, I get my resultant force no problem. The second one is determine the resultant moment. Now this one's also easy because if I have MA and MB in Cartesian vector notation, which you should because remember cross product returns the vector in Cartesian vector notation, so it should be no problem. All I have to do is add the components together, I'm looking good. And then finally, most professors would like you to draw kind of what just happened. So we have our original situation above and we should draw that. Okay, we went from that situation where we had two forces to this situation where we now have a resultant force acting at point O and we have a resultant moment acting at point O. So this is kind of what we did. We took two forces that did not act at point O and we converted them into an equivalent force couple system that acts at point O. Now the trick here is this, wherever the point of interest is, it's going to change the result in moments. Because remember, we're taking moments about specific points. So if they wanted this force couple system at a different point, let's say point P, well, the cross products are going to change. So it's something to keep in mind. So yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.